Now, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Anycubic S1 combo. We're going to look at it through the lens of someone who's running a small 3D print farm. We print around 42,000 parts a year. I wanted to see if the Anycubic Cobra S1 would actually fit within our farm. The majority of the printers in our farm are bamboo. I do have some other printers in here, but it's important for me that all my parts look the same and are dimensionally accurate so that as my clients receive the parts, they're able to use them without any worry. And if I'm going to be using multiple printers to do it, it's important that they all look the same. So in today's video, we'll take a deep look at the printer. We'll see the print quality and we'll see if it can run with the rest of my farm. Now, I've been really happy with all the prints. So let's start with fun prints, right? And then I'll go into my functional ones. This I printed on the printer, did really well. You can notice the bottom has some defects still. So you have some artifacts. So fixing that first layer is going to be important for me. But overall, this looks great. Look how nice that looks. Really, really nice. Great finish for this. Uh, functional part, here is a vent adapter. And this is accurate. It's printed well. It has kind of a brim that I have to clean off. Uh, I probably wouldn't print it with a brim, but hey, it worked well. We then went ahead and this is using a different filament. Uh, I was going with this green and I wanted to see how well it did uh, with these areas right here. This grid pattern that you see right here. Most printers have stringing problems. Notice this is nice and clean. I did run out of filament and therefore that's why you see it incomplete. Uh, this actually, the first layer came out really good. So didn't have any issues there. You did see me with the sword a couple seconds ago, and let me go ahead and bring it on camera. This is a collapsible sword. It collapses, right? Not a problem. And what ended up happening here is I ran out of filament, this green filament. So then I put this filament in, and it came out with this really cool uh, look everywhere. So I'm kind of digging that this came out this way, but this, you know, works well, and it's collapsible. I did another fun print, uh, boomerang, multicolor boomerang. I could see that there's areas where this could be improved. Right? At least if I was going to, for example, uh, sell something like this, I would want it to be a little bit smoother and I'd want a cleaner finish. But still, this is good for using their profiles. Um, this is not what I work with. Can opener. Uh, this is a profile on theirs. Clean, right? And I like the way that turned out. These guys are all over the internet. So I said, hey, why not print one of these? And I wanted to see how it would look and made this one for Nilda. And this did have like tree support, came off really easy, multiple parts and color. Everybody has to print a Benchy. The Benchies came out clean. First layers of the Benchies actually came out really good. These are really nice. So Benchy, 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 I tried three Benchies. They all came out great. No defects here in this area. Arches are clean, details good, and they're fast as well. Now focusing on things that we use for parts, things that we create, that we resell in our 3D store. So th this is what I look at if it's going to fit, you know, my farm profile. So here's one of the parts that, that came off the printer. The quality is good. This would be acceptable. Uh, I was, I did get a chance to tweak this bottom a little bit. So it did come out much better than the other one, but this is print farm approved. Uh, we have this jig right here. You'll notice that I still have to do some tweaking, right? So while the quality and the, and I would say the actual, size of this jig is still appropriate and it's good you notice that on the letters up here kind of lost the letters so i need to adjust that profile in order to be able to use this or to make this a viable solution uh, for sale and then here's that one part that we did again but this is a different one but you'll notice that i'm having problems with that first layer still so what do i think uh, for my farm use this is definitely a farm capable machine, something that could be used in our farm. I'd say the only issue that I have is the fact that it's closed that I can't use Orca slicer. I have to use their proprietary slicer. One way around it is just by loading all your prints in memory and then running from memory, which is what I do. And then you could use it and it would fit your workflow. But all in all, this is a great printer, works really well, and it's priced well too. When you first look at the Cobra S1, you may say, wow, that looks like a bamboo printer. And actually, it has a lot of features that are very similar. The materials are a little bit different, but they've got a lot of things right. First of all, they have this Ace Pro. What you see right here at the very top, the Ace Pro is their multi-material uh, solution. It's going to give you the ability to have four different rolls of filament, as you can see here. But more than just that, it's also a filament dryer. It literally has an active heater inside that allows you to heat or dry the actual filament um, as you're running it or prepping it for run. And I think that that's a big big plus. Uh, so this printer 
not only has that, but it also has a lot of the attributes that you see. It isn't an enclosed printer, but there are some differences. First of all, the top and the door, while the door is not the type of door that swings easily, it is all made out of plastic. It is not glass. So that's going to be some of the differences that you see here. Now, overall, you're looking at a printer that's going to have a build volume, and we'll open up this door for a second, a build volume of 250 by 250 by 250. Given the fact that it's enclosed, you're able to use PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, and ASA. Not a problem with this. And even though it's not a heated chamber, it's able to, I would say, uh, the heat buildup because of the build plate actually is well kept inside. And by the way, this printer is super quiet. You're looking at a total print speed or fast print speed of 600 millimeters per second. But let's be factual, guys. I never have been able to run any of our printers, and I have a lot of them back there, at their top speeds. So practical speed is around 300 millimeters per second with accelerations that are like crazy numbers, you know, 10,000 millimeters and also 20,000 millimeters. But again, I really don't see, you know, that maximum use out of it. That does not mean that this printer does not print well. Now, this printer also then has one of the lowest noise profiles I've seen in a quite a time, a long time. So we're talking about 46 decibels of noise. And so this is the type of printer, if you don't have a dedicated space and you have it in a common area, you're not going to be really worried about a lot of noise. And there's a lot of things that are quiet, not just the printing process, but then also even as it's exchanging filament, it's not really loud at all. Now, the print head and the print bed, you're talking about a 320 C max temperature and 120 C on the bed. That's going to, again, give you that ability to be able to work with multiple, again, give you that ability to be able to work with multiple materials. Now, the one thing that I find limiting about this printer is that it doesn't really have a lot of print heads available right now. There's actually a lot of accessories that I'm still wishing the printer would have. And they gave that feedback to Anycubic and they said it's coming. This printer is not, you know, wasn't just released, right? So just a little concerned that it's still taking a little bit longer to get some of these accessories available. But they assure me that that's something that's going to be available really, really shortly. Core XY, right? And it you know, it performs really well. I will tell you, I did not have one print fail. Uh, my testing, I'm using their browser or their uh, slicer software, and I'm making sure that when I'm using that slicer software, that I'm not making any changes. Like I like to test my printers without adjusting the filament profiles or the print profiles out of the box because that's what most consumers do. Now, I will tweak this a little bit further to meet my needs in my farm, but I'm showing you everything with the standard settings. That being said, the standard settings, there are not enough of them, right? They have very little filament profiles. And by the way, even though this is using Orca Slicer, it's a proprietary uh, slice or, or white labeled version of it. And you can't use standard Orca, which is also a complaint of mine that I gave to Anycubic as well. So those are some of the, the cons that I've highlighted it. But let's talk about some of the pros. Uh, the pros, great printer. I didn't have it, haven't had any problems whatsoever. I did have a filament clog once, but it wasn't a clog. There was a break in the filament tube that I had to take out the filament tube to clear, and then it was fine. Uh, that's the only issue that I had with it. Let's take a closer look at what's going on inside. So you're going to see right here some of the prints that we actually uh, work with uh, for our farm. So we do a lot of jigs and a lot of components. And this is one of our jigs that we use for fiber lasers. So we're looking for clean prints. We're looking for prints that are accurate from a dimensional perspective. And we're looking for prints that, again, are going to fit our profile for some of the other printers. This, in its current state, is about 95% there. I'm just going to bring this up so you can see it. So this was printed on, on this printer. And you could see right here, um, it is relatively clean. This is a really, really good print coming off of this printer. And everything is uh, as I would expect it. There's some artifacts and some gaps. You can see where it says ultra right there that I'd like to see fixed. But all in all, this is good. When I look at the bottom layer, this is where I see some issues. See that right there? That would not pa pass our QA. So right then and there, that would go out. So I need to fix that first layer uh, print so that we can get that really nice print because the top is not bad at all. And by the way, the top is dimensionally accurate. So as we take a look at the printer, one of the things that you saw immediately is, you know what? Yeah, this does have a PEI sheet and prints uh, stick well and they come off well. So dual sided, no, no problem. Uh, and as we take a look at what's going on inside, let's take a look and see at that. This is going to be very similar to what you would find with uh, some of the other printers. Um, what it has right here, though, it has that little roller that you found in like the bamboo line. I'm surprised that they're not using the little silicone uh, rods that come up. I actually prefer that. 
that's kind of in my mind old tech and it should be modernized with some of the new uh, new ways that we're cleaning print heads. Outside of that, I would say that would be my only complaint. You can see um, inside will pull out a little bit. Pretty much what you would expect from a Core XY. And even though it doesn't have insulation or heating, it is relatively quiet. You know, it's definitely something that's usable in an area where you have, uh, you know, not a dedicated space, but something that you may have in a home where you're concerned about the overall noise. Uh, should it be a concern for you? And keep in mind, things are plastic, right? So this isn't metal, but it does a really nice job of dampening any kind of noise generated. In the menu, very colorful menu. I actually do really like this menu quite a bit. And one of the things that I will basically state is that the usability of the menu is actually really good. So if you're going to start printing, I love the fact that your parts are in color. So you can see all the parts. A lot of the, what I do is functional parts, but I got some fun things for you guys. Uh, here you can see your filament. This is where I would call out some of the shortcomings. They don't really have a lot of filament profiles. They only have any cubic profiles. And let's face it, we just because we buy a printer from a specific brand, it doesn't mean that we use that filament from that brand. So they should, and I gave them that feedback that they should allow for more uh, types. And they do, right? But it's not that they don't allow for it. It's just that there aren't any profiles, so you have to tweak the, the filament yourself. A uh, dryer option, which is really nice. And you notice that you can have two of them. So you can have up to eight colors on this system, or you can have one color is the minimum, which would be without the Ace Pro, which is what this uh, filament or the AMS is referred to as. Over here, you have details about your uh, printer again, control, calibration, and then if you wanted to move something. And then over here, you have your kind of like your settings, right, where you'll be able to go in and uh, do some more configuration. This device will work on the cloud, and but it will not work or support other slicers like Orca Basic Slicer. Uh, so if you want to be able to use Orca Basic or the standard Orca, you'd have to load the files manually, not through the network. And what you can see right here is that there is a USB uh, stick area that you could do that, but it would have to be a manual upload as opposed to one that is wireless. Uh, and this does have a mobile version as well, which is really nice, but you can't leverage it if you're using another a browser or so, not a browser, another uh, slicer for use with this printer. Now with the filament dryer, I have and also uh, multi-material solution, I've been using paper spools um, and then also some plastic spools. I've had no issues with it. Uh, everything is easy to, if there's a jam, which I haven't had, but I've looked and traced the, the actual uh, tubes and how the, the actual runs go, seems to be pretty straightforward and easy to address. One of the things I find that's different with this one is that it does have a power cord, uh, which you don't see with a lot of the other solutions. Typically, they're powered by the actual printer. This one requires external power because of the uh, heat element that it has inside and that supports that drying solution. On the back of the printer, this is where things I'd say could use some tidying up. You'll notice here, this is where all the filament comes out of. I don't like that this is just here hanging. I wish that there was something, and maybe I could 3D print something that tucks this away, but it just seems to be untidy, right? Uh, here you have your connection that goes to your actual printer, uh, the power cord that goes from the actual printer to the actual, the um, again, power itself uh, so that it can power this for heating purposes. And then they do have over here, we'll pan down a little bit, they have the actual multi, uh, or all your filaments are going to come in. And you notice that you get four inputs that come into the single that goes into your uh, actual printer itself. Outside of that, it has a little power switch on the bottom, that's it. And then obviously your poop is right there, that's where your poop would come out. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.